WordPress is a free and open source content management system, or CMS, that uses PHP and MySQL. Its flexibility is likely due to its extensible plugin architecture and templating system, as well as being able to administer basically everything through a web interface. You'll see WordPress running blogs, company websites, and e-commerce stores. Today, we're going to spin up a WordPress instance using Docker and Docker Compose for testing, then take a look at the structure and some key elements of WordPress, do some manual enumeration, some automated enumeration with WP Scan, and then attack the administrator accounts. In part two, we'll dive more into how to exploit plugins and misconfigurations. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So for installation, I'm actually here on my Debian machine. And of course you can use Kali to run your WordPress instance if you want to follow along, but I like to keep some separation between the web apps that I'm hosting and my Kali VM, which I use to carry out attacks. Just a personal preference, really. Now, if you don't have Docker and Docker Compose installed already, you can do this with sudo apt install docker.io. And then same again, sudo apt install docker-compose. And just so you can see the versions that I'm running, so if I just do docker-version, I've got docker 20.10, and then docker compose dash dash version, I think this is 1.25. And I do have version two as well uh, in my ops folder, docker compose two dash dash version, but 1.25 will do us for today. So first up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to this gist that I have, and this has the docker compose yaml file. The link to this will be in the description below. So all I'm gonna do is click raw, control A, control C, come back to my terminal and just sudo vim docker compose dot yaml insert paste and you can see we're pulling down mysql and also the wordpress latest which i think is 6.2 so i'm just going to save this and then we should be good to go so sudo docker compose up you can use dash d to run this in the background but i like to have it running in the terminal so that when I'm working, I can see the messages and the traffic. And we'll give this a minute to boot up. All right, it looks like it's up and running. So I'm just gonna come over to my browser, come to localhost, and here we have the installation. So I'm just gonna change this to English UK. Click continue. And the site title can be Tiramisu and the username Alex, and I'm gonna set a weak password because we're gonna demo a brute force attack. So I'm just gonna set this. It's quite nice that WordPress now has the confirm use of weak password. Hopefully that will discourage some users from using weak passwords when they're doing their initial setup. And then we have uh, an email address. So I'm just gonna do asdasd.com and then install WordPress. So here we are, we can log in, Alex and Alex. And we're logged in and good to go. Now there is a one more configuration change that we need to make because you see here we're running on localhost. When I try to access this from my other VM, even though I can find the website using the IP address of this machine, all of the internal links will be things like localhost slash whatever, whatever. So I won't be able to navigate to the sites without having to manually change that each time. So all I'm gonna do is come down into settings and you can see we have the WordPress address and the site URL. And then I'm just gonna come back here, grab my IP address, which is 10.10.100.146. Paste this in here and then click save changes. And then we need to re-log back in, but as you can see, we're at 10.10.100.146 instead of localhost now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create some content. So obviously when we're attacking this, we need a little bit of content on the website to have things to actually interact with. So if we just come into pages, we'll add new and Vermasu is the best. And then this is some content. And then I'm just gonna hit publish. That looks like it's worked. We'll come back to here. And then I don't think we need to change the theme. We can just keep the 2020 theme and then plugins. I'm just gonna activate these plugins here. So I just click activate. I'm not gonna put the email address in, activate that one. And let's add one from the library. So let's just install BuddyPress. Once this is installed, we'll just click activate. 
And then when we're running our enumeration scripts against WordPress, hopefully we'll be able to find these plugins. Now, one last thing before we jump into enumeration and start attacking our site, I want to show you some of the key files and directories. So if I just come back over to my terminal and we do sudo docker ps-a, and here we have the container ID of our WordPress latest, and I'm just going to copy this and then sudo docker exec-it bash, and we're going to drop into a shell on this container. And as you can see, it's dropped us into var www.html, so I'm just going to lslah, and here you can see our WordPress installation. One key file that I want to start with is the wp-config.php. So if you can read files on the server through some exploits, often there are hard-coded credentials in here. Now I suspect because we're running Docker, it's just gonna use the environment variables, but let's take a quick look. So we'll just cat wp-config.php. And you can see the keys and the salts for our installation. And here we have the database settings. So here we have the DB name. Obviously it's using the environment variables, but often you'll see hard-coded usernames and passwords in here. So this is always a good file to target if you can read files on the server or you get something like file inclusion, use filters to read the PHP file instead of executing it. So next up we have the folder WP includes. So let's just take a look in there. And in here is all of the core components and things used to run WordPress. So we'll come back out of this and WP content is also important. So if we CD into WP content, which is just here, here we can see things like plugins and uploads. And this is also an important directory to be aware of. For the rest, I recommend you come in and just take a quick look around, maybe skim over the documentation because understanding some of the core files and structures of WordPress is going to help you later on when you have vulnerabilities like file uploads or file inclusion or carrying out enumeration. So gaining a basic understanding of what's happening under the hood is really helpful. But for now, let's move on to some basic enumeration. I'm just going to head over to my Kali machine, log myself in. Let's open up a terminal and also Firefox as well. And if I recall, we're running on 10.10.100.146. And here we are. So the first thing we want to do is get the WordPress version. And unless the site's using a plugin that strips this out of the HTML, we can just have a look at the source code. I'll zoom in a little bit and just search for WordPress. And usually you'll get this WordPress 6.2.2. You can also check the CSS file. So I think style.min.css. Here we are. And we also have version 6.2.2 as well. So this is probably the easiest and quickest way to get the version. And obviously you can do a very quick search exploit for 6.2.2. So next up, we want to enumerate the plugins. So on older versions or misconfigured versions of WordPress, we can go to dash WP content, which is a folder that we just looked at a minute ago. And then we can go to slash plugins. And as you can see, we don't actually get any information back. So there's no directory listing, which is a good thing. So that means that this is well configured. But of course, if we come back to our machine and we come into plugins, there is actually some content in there. So BuddyPress that we installed and some other things as well. So there are a couple of ways to enumerate plugins, even though we can't access this directory directly. So I'm just gonna come back and first up, we'll just use fuff. So FFUF, and I'll grab this, dash U, and then we'll fuzz. And the word list can be user share word lists dub. And we'll just do common for now. And we'll do dash E.php since there are some PHP files in there. And we can leave this running. And I suspect what will happen is it will give us a bunch of 301s, so some redirects. So if we see activity, for example, and we copy this, and then we go to here, what WordPress is actually doing is it's saying, hey, you're trying to access this, but your path looks like it's a little bit wrong. And so it's actually going to forward us to this page, but in a different location. So if you're using Fuff, you might have to go ahead and filter out 301s and then continue your scan. But for now, I'm just going to stop this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at WP scan, which is obviously designed more for WordPress. So WP scan dash dash URL. And hopefully what this will do is it will give us the version and all of the plugins. So 10, 10, 100, 146. 
hit enter. And notice we're not using the API token yet because we don't need it. We're not actually looking for vulnerabilities. We're just trying to enumerate information. And that was pretty quick. Obviously, this is running locally, so it's going to be a little bit faster than attacking something that's online. And let's verify some of this information. So we've got interesting entries. So the Apache version, and we've got the PHP version. We've got the WordPress version here. So WordPress version 6.2.2 identified. And then the theme in use 2023. And it found BuddyPress as well. Gives us a version, tells us that it's up to date, which is also useful to know. And that's about it. Now here it says, yeah, no API token was given. So if we wanted to give an API token, we just do dash dash API token and we insert our token here. If you want a token, then you just go to wpscan.com, sign up a free account. And I think you get 25 scans a day with the free token. In part two, we'll do a little bit more of that since we'll be attacking plugins and the WordPress installation itself. But for today, we don't actually need the API. So next, what I want to do is I want to find some users so that we can attack them. So I'm going to come to the website and usually part of my enumeration will be clicking around, making sure I know what content's available and harvesting information from the site. Especially if you're doing a CTF, you'll often find comments or pages that, you know, reveal some information or clues. But in the real world, what we're interested in is usernames. So we can just go to this post and you can see we get this posted on 12th of June, 2023 in Uncategorized by Alex. So let's go to wp-admin. And here we are at the login form. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to paste Alex and just put in a random password. And here we get an error. The password you entered for the username Alex is incorrect. And by default, WordPress has this kind of weakness that is not best practice where if you type in a username wrong, it will tell you and it'll say, hey, the username admin is not registered. So if the default configuration hasn't changed and there's no brute force protection, we can easily enumerate usernames. And I'm pretty surprised WordPress hasn't changed this by now. This is kind of a common weakness that it's not really acceptable for modern web applications. So let's try and brute force this account. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep our scan syntax the same, except we're going to add dash u alex dash p user share word lists rock you. And this is a very long word list. This will probably take days to complete, even locally. But I'm just going to run it for demo purposes anyway. And we'll just hit enter. And then it'll do the same enumeration as before. We'll give it a second to run. And then here we are. So performing password attack on XML RPC against one user. So if we just open up a new terminal, what we can do is we can just cat user share word list rock you. And let's just grep for Alex, although we want an exact match. So let's do FX and then let's find the line number. Okay, so we know the password is Alex, so for demo purposes, and we know that it's on 4013 in Rock U. So let's see how long this is going to take. We're already at 2600, so it shouldn't take too much longer until we manage to crack it. So let's see if this is successful. And here we are. So it's found valid combinations and username Alex, password Alex. So we can verify this. We can just come in here and do Alex and Alex. And here we are on the dashboard. So that's it for this video. In part two, we'll take a look at how we can exploit plugins and misconfigured versions of WordPress, as well as how to get a shell from the admin dashboard. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And I'll catch you in part two.